So you want to be able to migrate windows from one drive to another, and you want to be able to do it for free. Today, I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to be updating one of my previous and most popular videos. So using Disk Genius is still the most simple and free way to do this that I've found. I haven't found anything that is as easy to use, is completely free, and has, for the most part, the least amount of issues. Now, the reason for this updated video is we have learned quite a few things with almost half a million people using my previous video to do their migrations. Majority of people have gotten through the process entirely fine without any problems. And the small minority of people that have had issues, most of which can be fixed relatively easily. And we're going to tackle those when doing our migration today. Before you complain about how much I talk at the beginning of this video, before getting into it, the whole video is timestamped. So if you do want to skip to something, you're more than welcome to. But if you do skip to something and you need help, I do highly suggest you watch the whole video because at some point I may have fixed or talked about the problem that you're running into and solved it for you. So do keep that in mind. So when should a tool like this be used to migrate your OS from one drive to another? And in reality, it should only be used if there's gonna take a lot of effort for you to fresh reinstall and then put all your stuff back onto the new drive. Doing a fresh install is always gonna be your best solution. You're gonna run into the least amount of issues. You're gonna be able to do a fresh start. You're not gonna run into any driver problems, anything like that. A fresh install is always best. But if you do have an OS drive that is filled with a lot of stuff and you don't wanna to have to reset up everything, this is one of those situations where you can use a migration tool. If you're now realizing that maybe you don't need to do migration and instead you should be doing a fresh install, I have a video walking through how to do that for yourself. I will leave a link down in the description as well as up top in the info cards. Now this should not be used to migrate an OS from one computer to another computer, especially if they have different hardware, which most of them will. Um, you're gonna run into driver issues. You're gonna run into a lot of just really weird Windows bugs. It is very much not suggested. This is entirely focused on just upgrading your drive size, upgrading your drive speed, um, changing from a hard drive to an SSD or changing from a SATA SSD to an NVMe drive, something along those lines. That's where this should be used. It should not be used to copy between computers whatsoever. Now, as has been the case for all of these previous videos, please make sure that you check the pinned comment and the description, I update them as much as possible with up-to-date relevant information. If there's a common bug in a new version of the software, for example, I will mention that. If there is a very common issue that people are running into and I do an update about that, I will mention it. If I do an updated video like this one, I will mention that. So please make sure that that is the first place you go ahead and check. And a part of the description and pin comment is that I do put together an FAQ in my Discord as well as on my website that will cover the most common problems that I do end up seeing. This is something that I update as much as possible and it's something that I wish a lot more people noticed in the previous videos. Now that leads into where to get help if you run into a problem. The comment section is a terrible place to get help for 99% of the issues that come up because you can't share screenshots, you can't go ahead and kind of have a more intimate back and forth. It's just a terrible, terrible spot. If you do need help, the best place to do that is to go into my Discord. I have a help desk channel set up specifically for helping. So please make a post in the help desk not in any of the other channels, not in general, not in any of that stuff. In the help desk, you can go ahead and search first and see if someone else has had your issue and if we've solved it. And then if not, you can go ahead and make your own fresh post. And one of us will try to get to you as, as quickly as possible. Just be a little bit patient. So now let's talk about what migration means. There's no such thing as just moving just Windows from one drive to another. Windows has a lot of elements to it and there's no such real thing as moving just Windows. This process is going to go ahead and copy your entire C drive as well as the other system and backup partitions to whichever new drive you're going to be copying to. It's going to do the whole C partition. So do keep that in mind. If your C partition has a lot of fluff on it, if it has a lot of things that you can get rid of, um, if it has some large files that you don't need to copy in this migration process, get rid of them because it is gonna do that whole current C partition. Also as a disclaimer, I am not responsible for data loss. You are taking a risk when doing any kind of migration process like this using any tool, whether it's free 
or paid, you should always be backing up your data before you move or modify it in any way. You can back up using a flash drive, external drive, cloud storage, or dedicated backup solutions. Back up anything that you consider important and that you wouldn't want to risk losing. Again, you are taking a risk by doing any kind of migration or copying of your files. Now, if your computer does not have a spare or open slot for you to be able to do the migration, whether it's an NVMe slot or a SATA port, you can use some kind of external enclosure. I'm gonna be using this external enclosure from Yoda Master. I'll leave a link to a couple of suggestions for NVMe and SATA uh, enclosures in the description if you do wanna go ahead and do that. Um, I just am not gonna be uninstalling a whole bunch of drives from this computer, so this makes it a lot easier for me and I only have to swap one drive out. Um, it's gonna be entirely dependent on your process though. If you do have enough slots, you can kind of just ignore this. So first step is going to be getting the software. I'm gonna leave a link for it down in the description. You can go ahead and get it there. We're just gonna go ahead and do the free download and it's gonna download here and we can launch it as soon as it's finished. So first thing is when installing the software, you're gonna install it onto the current C drive. So your currently active Windows partition, install it on there, do not install it onto the drive you're gonna be copying to because that drive's gonna get wiped. Do not install it onto some other drive. Install it onto the drive that you're going to be copying the partition from to your new drive. So this is gonna be our C drive. Leave it as the default. We're just gonna go ahead and press next. So once we get the software installed, we're gonna go ahead and start this migration process. Now today I'm gonna to be going from a smaller to a larger drive, but if you're going from a larger to a smaller drive, which is very common if you're going from like a hard drive to an SSD, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the C partition as well as the system partition, so the system and the recovery partitions together are using less space than the total space on the new drive. So if you're running into space issues, delete some games if you can, move some files off to an external drive or anything like that. I have a video where I talk about different things that you can do to reduce the space of your C drive. I'll leave it up here and down in the description, um, but that is gonna be an important part because it's not gonna let you continue if those partitions take up more used space than what is available on that new drive. So do keep that in mind. Now, as mentioned, we're gonna be going from a smaller to a larger drive. So we have the smaller drive here, which is a one terabyte NVMe drive. And then we're gonna be going to this two terabyte NVMe drive. Now the two terabyte NVMe drive currently doesn't have any partitions on it. If yours does have any partitions on it, you're gonna to wanna to get rid of those because you shouldn't be copying this to a drive that has data on it. You're risking losing data, even if your C partition and the system partitions are smaller and can fit onto that new drive, you're just risking a lot of problems and you really shouldn't have your OS uh, drive partitioned out anymore. That really only applied to hard drives and on SSDs, it just really doesn't make a lot of sense. So if you do need to delete the partitions on your destination drive or your target drive, just right click here and you would choose delete all partitions and just make sure that there's no partitions there to get in the way. Now, our next step is just gonna hit OS migration and it's already gonna know which drive our OS is on, which is great. So now we're just choosing our target disk. We're gonna choose that two terabyte disk that I mentioned. The gray means that there's no partitions there. It's completely free, so that's great. We're gonna press okay. Now here is something important and something that a lot of people ran into in the previous video, which is why I made a follow-up video for that. We wanna allocate all of this space to take up the full space of the drive. Now, if you do wanna create a separate partition, you're welcome to leave it like this and then you can create a new partition with that extra space, but I don't suggest it. I suggest that you go ahead and allocate all that space. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna drag this all the way over to the right so that our new C drive, our new C partition is going to be the full two terabytes of this drive. There's not gonna be any wasted space or anything like that. It's gonna keep our system partition the same size, so that's perfectly fine. And then we can go ahead and press start. Now, it's gonna mention that all files on the target disk are gonna be overwritten. This is why I mentioned just deleting the partitions beforehand uh, avoids having any kind of surprise when this happens. So we're just gonna press okay. And this is something that has also changed from the previous video. Before I suggested doing the WinPE method, that was Disk Genius's previous suggested method before. Now their hot migration has done a much better job and this one is gonna be the much more stable. A lot of people had issues with, with WinPE before, so hot migration is gonna be the method we're gonna be using today. And it's the one that I suggest. If you do run into issues with hot migration, 
you can try the Windows PE version, but hot migration should be fine. Now, sometimes there would have been an, an option here to go ahead and have the system auto reboot into the new drive or auto boot into your BIOS. Not all motherboards support that option. However, a bunch of people did not have that option and it can cause a few issues. So I suggest that you do not have that enabled and that you do all of this manually. It's gonna solve one of our biggest issues of people running into a boot manager problem where their boot manager does not properly swap over to the new drive and then everything just gets all clunky and people are running into blue screens. So we're just gonna go ahead and let this migration go. It should be pretty quick because I'm using a demo drive that does not have a lot of data on it and we'll come back when this is finished. The speed at which this is gonna take is gonna be entirely dependent on the size of your drives, the amount of data, the size of those data chunks, the speed of your drives, the speed of the interface this is gonna kind of really depend on a whole bunch of factors. So just be patient, it shouldn't take too long. If it's taking more than like 15, 20 hours, you may be running into a problem. But the nice thing is, is that this is just copying data from one drive to another. So if you do run into a problem, you can just stop the process, wipe the target drive and try the process all over again. So the system migration has completed, so we are perfectly fine there. We're just gonna go ahead and press complete. We can see now that the two terabyte drive has the same partitions as the one terabyte drive, and we are using the full space on the drive. So this is a really good thing. We're gonna go ahead now and turn off the PC. And now we're gonna go ahead and remove the original drive from the computer and boot back into the new drive with the old drive completely disconnected so that it doesn't run into any issues. We ran into issues with boot manager problems before and we ran into issues where the new drive wasn't showing up in the boot options before if we didn't unplug the original drive. So I highly suggest you unplug the original drive. If you have an NVMe drive, you're gonna to want to pull that out of the slot entirely. If you have a two and a half inch or three and a half inch drive, you can just unplug the data cable from that drive and it'll make sure that it's not being seen by the PC. So I've plugged in the new drive and now we're gonna go ahead and go into our BIOS and we're gonna make sure that we're booting into the proper drive through the boot priority. On most motherboards, this is gonna be hitting delete or hitting F2. You should see it pop up on your screen, however, and it'll tell you which key you have to press on your keyboard to get into your BIOS. Now, every motherboard's BIOS is gonna be different between manufacturers, between product lines. So you're gonna to wanna to try to find something that says boot. Um, if you do need help trying to find this, just Google your motherboard uh, model and Google change boot priority and you should be able to find it. This is where my boot priority options are. And you wanna make sure that boot option number one typically will say Windows Boot Manager on it. Uh, and that's the one you're gonna wanna select. You're gonna wanna make sure that you avoid any that do not say Windows Boot Manager if one does say Boot Manager and we are using the Oracle drive. So we are good to go. We can go ahead and press F10, and that is going to save our configuration and it's gonna boot into that drive. All right, so we are now booted into the new drive. We're gonna go ahead and double check and make sure that everything looks okay. So if we go into our Windows Explorer, we can see that we are on the two terabyte drive. And if we wanted to double check, you can go and double check anything so you know my super important pictures of potatoes are all here and they all look fine. Uh, my video on how to grow potatoes is here. So we're, you know, we're in the clear. All of our data is here. I would highly suggest you double check your data. So now that we've checked and made sure that everything is working, I highly suggest you do at least one or two startups with the new drive, making sure that you don't run into any of the blue screen issues relating to the boot manager, making sure that things are all clear. And once you do that, we can go ahead and if you want to, you can wipe the old drive and I'll show you the quickest way to do that again with Disk Genius. So I have the old drive reconnected again. We are still making sure that we're booting off of the new drive. So double check and make sure that you're booting off of your new drive. So that's gonna be the one that has C drive on it. Um, the C drive is always gonna be the one that you're booting off of. So do keep that in mind. And here is our old one. And if you want, well, all you have to do is just right click on the old one and delete all partitions. If you wanna do a full deletion, you would do an erase sectors. This is gonna take quite a bit of time, but it's going to go ahead and fully erase those sectors and make sure that a lot of that data cannot easily be recovered. But if you're just doing it for yourself, you don't really need to go through all that trouble. 
I would just delete all partitions. Then you can go ahead and create a new partition on there and you can use it as a secondary drive. If you're gonna have it as an external one, you can put it in one of these enclosures and just use it as a portable drive, a whole bunch of options there for you. Um, but this definitely gonna be the easiest way to wipe that drive afterwards. And we're all good to go. I'm not gonna wipe it because I am still gonna be using that one as my original drive. Um, but yeah, super, super simple process. And I really hope that this video helps you out. Now, again, if you do run into a problem and you do need some help, make sure that you go ahead and hop into the Discord. Go ahead and search the forum post first to make sure that someone hasn't already asked the same question as you and hopefully gotten it answered. And then you can go ahead and make a post and I'll try to get to you as quickly as I can. Um, just be patient. You know, I'm not on my computer all the time. I do have another job that I have to work and I will get to you as quickly as I possibly can. Also, make sure that you keep your eyes peeled on the description and the pinned comment of this video because I will update them whenever there's some kind of major update or anything that I do have to notify you guys of. You know, the FAQ, all of that kind of fun stuff that I've done on the previous videos have all been done through the description and the pinned comment, so do make sure you keep an eye on that. With all that said, I really do hope that this video helped you out. And if it did, I'd really appreciate it if you like, subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, you can leave them down in the comment section below and I'll try to reply to them as quickly as I can. Big thanks to my patron sponsors and big thanks to you for watching today in this video. If you wanna see any other videos relating to Windows, whether it's de-bloating, some awesome apps to use, things to get rid of, things to kind of manage, you can check out the playlist right up here. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next time.